When a child is born, they're in this very dualistic environment for the first time. They leave the safety of the womb and all of a sudden they're exposed to the elements of reality. It's painful. The first inhale is a painful one, right? The child cries and starts to express the need for its needs to be met through just expressing physical pain and discomfort and hoping that a parent will be responsive to those needs, in which case the experience of safety is born. A child needs that experience of being held, being nurtured, to have the oxytocin release, to feel like there is love present. It's very neurochemical and primitive in nature if we look at it at that level, but also there's a deep program if we think about the experience of, of being of an individual is connected to the information matrix of their consciousness. So for example, it begins before we're even born. If a child is being conceived in an environment in which there's no love, let's say the child was not wanted, maybe the mother uh, contemplated having an abortion or wanted to have a different gender of a child or something went wrong or maybe there's disputes in the family before that child is born, there is something that that child is experiencing subconsciously which creates resistance toward the sense of self already. There's a feeling that he is not wanted, he is not needed. There's a feeling of premature unsafety before they even have a chance to encounter the life experience. And so many people are experiencing trauma where they don't even understand why it is that they feel so unsafe in reality. Why is it they can't accept love or receive that love is possible when they just transcend the, this illusion of inner discomfort out of a lack of self-love? And that might come simply from an experience of you not feeling loved even in utero. And what's crazy is that we can actually start to transcend that program by first identifying that it can most severely be you know, trapped in our consciousness on that level of subconscious expectation. What do we feel that we deserve based on what did we or didn't we receive? So if our mother turns out to be God in this way that if she's providing the experience that we need to feel loved, if she's meeting our needs adequately, then we start to experience a healthy sense of self. Basically, the child needs to be going through an experience where they feel like they become source because they're receiving love through connection to their mother. They go from a feeling of total oneness to the split reality in which if their needs are met, they start to feel like they become God. They become the receiver of all that love, that light, that consciousness and awareness through connection to their motherly figure. And so if that isn't being achieved, then the separation really becomes stark. And that child starts to feel like they can express their needs, but they're not gonna have their needs met. So they experience duality in this very dark and confounding way. They start to feel like it doesn't matter what they express, if they don't receive love, there's something deeply within them that means they're not worthy of that love. Which starts to lay a deeper template in regards to if they express anything, if they are their authentic self or if they're vulnerable, they're not going to be able to have their needs met in life. And so very often narcissism is born in that time when a child is vulnerable and their parent doesn't hear them, doesn't acknowledge them, doesn't see them, that child goes through a split self, where it starts to realize that if they're truly expressing who they are and what they need and what they feel, the reality is that of pain, which means they start to associate their authenticity with the state of separation or pain, which then means that every time they choose to be authentic, they deal with the counter effect. They deal with the clash against what is and starts to create this program within them that means if they choose authenticity, they choose suffering. And so they choose to don the mask. And so very often it's before the age of 10 that narcissists become narcissists. And there's many different types of narcissism. But I think the important thing to realize here is that that's what really gives birth to the separation in the collective. That what causes people to breed separation and duality is the feeling of they can't really be themselves. They can't really associate with their own souls. They need to be more in the egoic mind. They need to be creating a facade, an illusion, a separation from themselves in order to prove the false identity. But what's really going on in the inner world of a narcissist is there's just a lack of a sense of self. There's no ability to empathize and they can't really experience true love because they create a split from that ability to be truly tapped into the source of that connection because they simply did not experience it. So it's very sad that many people if not the majority of people in today's world have some heightened degree of narcissism simply because they're not able to connect with themselves. And this world makes it so easy to lose our connection to self because we have technology, we have social media, we have so many distractions and matrix conditions that really test our ability to choose non-duality and to stay resolute to who we really are, as opposed to to fit in and just choose conformity and losing our sense of self because it seems more convenient to don the facade. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting too is that everybody's on this spectrum of empathy and narcissism, that these two things are actually existent on a continuum. That if you choose to integrate self-love as a concept of being non-dual in nature, choosing to be authentic in spite of the environmental reaction, maybe even realizing if you didn't have your needs met as a child, it does not mean that you need to be choosing this maladaptive mechanism of being fake or choosing to 
prove your identity through attachment, through doing things that are false in nature, choosing to focus just on hyperachievement or on being very much focused on your appearance or doing these sorts of things that seem to prove that you love yourself, but really in reality, you're just hiding the inner void. So for as long as we have people that are hiding from their true sense of self, sheltering their soul, and trying to prove that they are this individual that's really just the projected avatar. It's everything they think they need to be to gain love and validation and approval, which is really conditional in nature. We're not going to have a truly integrated society. We're going to need more wars. We're going to need more duality because that's just projecting the inner reality that most people are facing, which is this inner child boo-boo, a reality in which they don't understand they can be meeting their inner child halfway and understanding how can they express fully. How can they choose authenticity and love even in spite of what they've experienced in the past?